I'm going to be starting a new series on DAX fundamentals and Power BI. So if you think that's something that could be useful for you, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell. So today we're going to be covering rolling averages. Rolling averages are an awesome way in order to be able to visualize data trends. Um, so uh, I'm just going to walk you through what I have so far. I'm using the AdventureWorks DW2012 database. Uh, I brought in the customer um, table, the product table, and the sales table. With These are my only columns right here uh, to look at the relationships. It's all centered around sales. Sales links to product based on the product key. Customer links based on the customer key. Pretty simple stuff. Um, but I just want to show you the DAX behind these rolling averages and they're, it's really cool to see. So let's go ahead and pull in a line chart um, and we're going to put in order date on the axis. So, uh, that's in a hierarchy, but we're going to want that as uh, just the regular order date and sales amount for our values. And this is going to show us this trend. That's a lot of data, more than we probably want. So let's add a date slicer so we can filter a little bit. Um, based on order date, we're gonna throw that in the slicer. And it's a nice looking date slicer. Um, filter down the data a little bit, doesn't really matter how much. Um, just something that'll show us a little more individual points. Um, and so now let's dive into the DAX behind rolling averages. Uh, one thing I always like to do is keep all my measures together. So that's a nice little tip. Uh, click on enter data and just throw in anything you want here. It really doesn't matter. Uh, this will bring up a new table on the right side and we'll rename that real quick to measures cool measures one sure and now we can see we have column one let's go ahead and add a new measure this will be called for week average and let's start diving into this um, apologies if my intellisense gets a little weird it's been kind of weird lately but hopefully that won't hinder us too much. So shift enter goes down a line. Cool. Um, so the way four week average is calculated is it basically takes the sum of the sales amount between a date period. Uh, we'll dive into that in just a second. If you're not familiar with the calculate function, it's a very awesome way to be able to calculate something based on a filter. Um, so first of all, you tell it what you want to calculate. So in our case, we want to calculate the sum of the sales amount. And I'm gonna to have to move my mouse every now and then so you can see because of my intelligence, uh, intelligence. Uh, so first of all, we're doing calculate sum of sales amount, comma, and now we give the filter that we want it to throw in there. And this filter gets a little complicated, but try to stay with me. We want to uh, only uh, sum the data based on the range um, between the order date we're looking at and 28 days in the past. So the way we do that, there's a very handy function called dates in period. Um, and you can read the intelligence up there. Um, dates in period takes dates, start date, number of intervals in interval, and returns the dates for the given period. So basically we're saying sum all of the sales amount for this given time period. And the way we're gonna put in dates in period is it's gonna be, we have a column, let me sh open up sales down here. We have a column called order date. So that's what we're gonna be using for the first date. Sorry, it's getting a little messy here. Um, we're gonna use order date. Great, I'll show you that. Um, comma, the last date we're gonna use is um, last date. That's another function using order date. Cool, so far we have dates in period, from order date to the last order date. That may not make sense yet, but once we give it the number of intervals, 28, and our interval is a day. So if we just look at that in a small chunk, um, we are summing the sales amount for the dates in the period of the order date, which will be our first order date, to 28 days in the future. So right now, that'll give us our sum. But that's just the sum of the 28 day period. So we're also going to want to average that since it's a four week average. Um, so our uh, divisor part is actually gonna look very similar to this. So we'll just copy and paste. But instead of sum, it is going to be distinct count because we want a distinct count of the number of days in that 28 day period. Most likely it's gonna be um, 28, but in case of businesses, there are certain business days. So in that 28 day period, there might only be, let's say 20 business days. So we wouldn't wanna 
um, divide by more days than we were in business. So in the distinct count, we want the distinct count of the days. So it's going to be order date again. Uh, dates in period, it'll be from the same order date to the last date order date. Great, awesome. And that's actually the entire four week average. So go ahead and click enter. And that should have worked. Let's take four week average and throw it onto the chart. Give it just a second to think. You can see it's thinking up here. And hey, there you go, a much smoother line that accounts for the four week average. Um, we can do the same with other averages. Uh, maybe you wanna see a six month average or a, um, let's say one year average. So let's, so let's do something similar to that. Let's go ahead and copy all that we've written here. Um, right click, add new measure. Uh, we're gonna call this six month average. And all we'll have to do for this is just change the um, interval. So we'll change this to month and give this six months. Same for this. And six. Awesome. Um, let's throw that on the graph, give it a second to think. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and add our last one. And as you can see, the six month average, way smoother. Let's do a one year average. We can just change this to year and give this one year. Sorry, one year. All right, there we go. And let's throw this on the graph as well. Give that just a second. It's a lot of data to have to comb through. Oh, there we go. You can see our one year average is rising as we're having a really good time and it starts to fall off. Very cool stuff. Uh, one thing I want to add, I will be doing a video on variables, but I want to give you a little bit of a primer into variables because it can be very useful. Variables are evaluated at the very beginning of the statement and they can be used anywhere else in the statement that you'd like. All you have to do is define the variable as var. Let me click away. Var, give it a name. We'll give it uh, interval equals and we can give it whatever we want. Let's give it, since we're doing uh, 28 days, let's do 28. Um, and to be able to use a variable, you then have to call a return clause and everything under the return is what's actually returned by the measure. So now that our interval is set as 28, we can just use interval and interval. Go ahead and click enter. And what's funny is to see if it's working, we'll just have to see that it didn't change. It's thinking this four week line should stay the same. Give it just a second as we put on more. Yep, there we go. Uh, so it didn't change, but that's just a little introduction into variables because we will be using those in the future. Um, it's really, really useful because basically variables take the filter context of the table. It takes the, like the only filter we have on this um, Power BI report so far is that we have this date filter. So it takes this date filter into account, not that it matters for our calculation, but it takes any filters into account, calculates a, um, calculate some value, and then that value can be used anywhere else in this expression that you'd like. Uh, very, very useful, and we will definitely be touching that in a little bit. So if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button, uh, comment down below what you'd like to see me teach you about decks, and I will see you in the next video.